Hey folks, this is Blur Dragon. Do you want to get your avatar into Bone Lab and kick ass? Well, cool. This video may be for you. <laughs> this video should be a step by step basics on how to set up your avatar for Bone Lab. Uh, if you found it funny that this video helpful, then drop a like and give a comment. Now let's get into this. Some of the prerequisites you need is you need to have Git installed, which allows you to pull from GitHub and install some of the packages you will need in order to get the Bone Labs SDK working in Unity. Speaking of which, you will need Unity for this game. I recommend downloading Unity Hub. It allows you to facilitate different installs because VRC and Bone Labs run on two different versions of Unity. So having the hub allows you to facilitate what version to use. Specifically for Bone Labs though, you need Unity 2021 3.5 F1. That is the versions that they are currently using for Bone Lab. The other thing you will need on top of that is a FBX model that you wish to use. In this case, we'll be using the Nardo Derg as an example by Nardo. On top of that, I also highly recommend having the Stress Level Zero page, which will be linked in the description description below. Specifically, when you install the Unity, do make sure that you have the Android build support, the OpenJDK, the Android SDK and NDK tools, as well as the Windows build support IL2CPP. This allows you to have the flexibility of not only exporting out for the Bone Labs for the PC, but for the Bone Labs on the Oculus if you're playing on an Oculus. The other thing I would also recommend is also having their avatar list open, which goes step by step on how to get your avatar imported. They do have a documentation on how to do this. All right, now that we got the prerequisites out of the way, let's get into it. The first step is opening Unity hub you will need to have unity up so that you can start a new project this is after you've installed the 2135 you're gonna open it you are now going to go click on 3d urp and then name your project do whatever you want now that we got Unity open, we can now go in and start adding with the package manager. In order to find the package manager, you will need to go to the top bar, click on window, and click on packet manager. You will then be able to press the plus button and add package from get URL. This is where you will add the three URLs presented in their documentation. I will see you when all these three packages are installed. All right. Now we have the three packages installed. It shows some look like this. We have the SLZ Universal RP, the Core RP Library, and the Maro SDK. Those are the three packages that it has you installed. We can now close this out, and we want to validate the project. So we go to Stress Level Zero, go to Void Tools, and validate the Maro project set. And click that, and you will click Fix All. Now that we have everything validated, we can click Cool because it has it on there, and now we were able to import our character. Now for importing your character, you can either import the FBX files, which if you look at your directory for it, it may look like something .fbx. You can drag and drop those characters in there and work with those. If you are, say, working from a VR chat avatar, generally they will have Unity packages, which you can use to install those characters. So in this case, I will use a Unity package. In order to import a Unity package, you can click on Assets import package, click on custom package. You will then browse to the location of where your avatar is that you wish to install and press open. Click import. Okay, now we should have our Unity package installed, which now has the Nardo Dragon and the Nardo scene. I don't recommend loading their scene, and you should start from scratch, and you should just click on the Nardo FX, or whatever FBX of the character that you are trying to import. In here, we can look on the inspector side. There is quite a few tabs to go through. First off, we will check boxes for the following. So it should some look something like this. Once you have it like this, you can click apply. It will We'll adjust the FBX. Now we click on the animations tab and uncheck the import constraints and animations. Now we click on the rig tab. This is going to be really important. If you are installing a base FBX, there is a few things that you need to make sure. You need to make sure that the animation type is humanoid. So if it doesn't say that, you should probably switch to humanoid. And then the avatar definition you created from this model. You will press apply. In this case, I don't have to because it's already rigged as a humanoid. But if not, then you would click apply and then you click configure. Now it will open up a different menu. 
This menu shows you all the bones in this character and how it is laid out. I will present on the screen before you what the requirements are for this. So what is optional? The optional ones is the upper chest, the left and right eyes because they can be overridden, the jaw, the middle finger bones, and the pinky finger bones. All others are a requirement. So like for example, in here, I do not have toe bones. So this model I would not be able to use and I'll have to edit it. If you guys want to see how to add bones to these characters, then I will probably make another video in the future that or you can look up how to adjust blender files and export them out with extra bonds I have now imported an FBX with the added toe bone and as you can see here because I just loaded just the FBX and it wasn't a safe unity package I will need to change the animation type to humanoid and I need to press apply before I can configure it now that it's ready I can press configure and I can now find where the toe bones are. The easiest way I recommend is if you click on the ankle, you can see in the hierarchy the other bones under it. So I'm going to grab the left toe, put it down here. I'm going to grab the right ankle, grab the right toe. Boom. And then you can go through and go and check everything else. I don't really like the, having the jaw bone because it makes it look like your character's mouth is open all the time. You don't really need it. Then you got the left hand, the right hand. If you want, you can add the pinky. So again, we can go find where the pinky is and add them in. Okay. Once you've applied all the bones where they need to be, you have all the necessary bones or moved all the unnecessary bones you will click apply and then you will press done it'll kick you back on the main menu and now if you have materials for this model probably should go on materials and swap to use external materials legacy and press apply what we can do is drag and drop fbx file of our character we're going to drag drop it into the scene as you can see he's already all nicely dressed up press zeros all the way you can see the new hotness now i like to edit the materials in the avatar itself by clicking open and going through <coughs> and changing all the necessary files as possible. The material is going to be the Universal Render Pipeline Lit EVR Workflow. You need to make sure all parts of it is that shader. Now, let's say that you have things that are specular, but it's only using the shader. Well, you can also kind of cheat it. When you expand it open, you change from opaque to transparent. Then you click on the base map and you change the alpha transparency to, I would say, around maybe 10 but it's more user preference and now you can get a transparent look this is also the time to where you would also change the texture files in this so if you expand it open you can drop a base map or a mass map or a normal map that you have for your avatars also you can also just uncheck things if there's things that you don't like and also hide it well, it is really up to you it also depends just on the avatar itself in this case i'm going to turn this all off for now because we have to do the next part now once you have your materials set and you have the avatar set to zero and you have verified that there's no scripts i must say that there should be no scripts on your avatar um if there's vrc scripts on there you want to go through and delete it whether it's fizz bones or the regular avatar scripts it's not going to say what script it is it's just going to say script if there are those items inside your avatar when you try to make it for bone labs it will throw an error and give you problems so sometimes just working with the base fbx that's the better way to go so that you can properly <coughs> export out your character once you have those things done you can then drag and drop the whole character back down here and you want to create an original prefab once you have done that you will now then click open it is now going to make everything blue but now we can add things to this prefab like the avatar assignment so if we add component and tick avatar and press enter and i am missing the chest bone because i am silly i will be right back all right, I'm back. Yeah, <laughs> if you are missing bones, avatar script will tell you, hey, you're missing stuff. And then you have to go fix it because it will not let you export it out. Now, as you can see, there is a lot of mesh stuff going on with our avatar right now. And we need to configure it so that it molds well with our avatar. First things first, you probably want to adjust where your eyes is. I re recommend clicking this perception so that it's isometric and then clicking on the arrows up here so you can get a nice flat representation of your avatar once you do you can adjust the eye offset if you set this to your nose bridge and you have a long muzzle anyone who watches your game will see a muzzle on there if you do not want that then i recommend setting your eye offset further maybe halfway or even at the tip of your nose so that you do not see it during your gameplay once that's done you will then click edit bodies so if you click edit bodies as you can see there are multiple gizmos that appear that need to be adjusted so in this case we can start with the top of the head so we just roughly place it you can look at different angles to see how it flows out the other portions is you also got where the head is you got the jaw and then you got the back of the head so you kind of just take a guess since this character is really fluffy uh, we'll put this to the forward of the head and then we have the jaw 
I like to put this like right at the cusp of the jaw, not fully like on the nose. That's your usual discretion. Then I would change to the Z and I would change this to where it fits the model of the head. What this is essentially doing is kind of creating collision zones for your avatar, like where it knows, like for top of the head, if you're gonna wear something, it knows where your top of the head is, as well as like how objects will affect your avatar, like how it will interact with your avatar. Now there's other zones to also mess with. You also have the chest area, the legs, and the arms. Those are all the four main areas. These are mirrored, so you only have to work on one side. On top of that, there is some soft body edits. That's if you have squishy parts. If you have any problems trying to adjust those gizmos, there is the advanced settings if you open the advanced settings you can then specifically adjust sliders so in the head section I can grab this and change the head top with the slider alone so if it gives you problems of trying to adjust it then I recommend using that so go ahead try to match it to your character's best I will see you and come back when we get to the legs specifically especially with digi grade planted grade creatures Okay, as you can see, I got the chest, head, arms done. Now we're gonna go on to the legs. Also keep in mind, these white squares tell you exactly where they line up in terms of like where the underbust, the waist, and the hip height is. You also have a crotch bottom, which you can set to the bottom, which will shorten the legs. Now, the legs are kind of a different story because if we look from the side profile, how in the hell we're we gonna get this? The answer, you don't. Um, but you do in fact try to get it as close as possible, so I will show you. So what I like to do is I like to try to get this as close as possible the best of my ability if i have to I'll expand it out a bit this one push it out and as you can see there is a limit how far you can actually go with boom and then as you can see this is a little bit harder so i just raise this up then i'm going to click on the z and then fix this because this is horrible and as you can see when i rotate out you can kind of see that it fits the the paw pads pretty well down here so for all the planted grade digigrade characters out there this is kind of the best that i've worked for myself if you find a different way please leave a comment below i would love to know this is it we now have our rigged up character now i should mention um, if for a reason your character does not have eyes, you can do an eye override in here and it would require you to make an object and place it where roughly your eyes would be. You would do it in the base of the body of the character. So in this case, I would click on the Nardo, right click it and create empty. This will create an empty object, which then I can lift up and put it into the head and it will pretty much get as close. Their instructions on creating those empty objects are again inside their SDK. Once we are done with that, we can and close out of it by pressing this back arrow. As you can see, our whole avatar is done. If I open it up again, it's still the same mesh. So we are ready to pack. Okay, so packing your avatar. What you need to do is you need to click stress level zero, click on void tools and asset warehouse. In this case, it is gonna find no pallets. So it's going to force you to create a pallet. Create a pallet, it will show you the screen. You can create a palette title. So in this case, I will be like Nardo Hulu, and you can put an author name on here and press create. This will ultimately create a palette. And what you can do is you expand it open. If you click on the palette, you can change certain aspects about this palette. You can change the description, the version. But what we want to do specifically is we want to click the add crate option. It will open up a new crate option. In this case, we want to switch this to an avatar crate and we want to look for our Nardo dragon. So in this case, we will go back, click on dragon, drag that new prefab that we've edited. And now we will just change the title of it to Nardo blue in this case. And we're gonna get to click create. Once we have created it, it shall now open a avatar crate. Within it is now Nardo blue. As you can see, you can add a description to this. You can make it unlockable redacted. So in this case, once you have this going, generate packed assets. It will now create a preview of your avatar and you are pretty ready to go this is this, this is it all you need to do is dictate whether you're packing it for pc or quest 2 for this tutorial this is all pc based there might be a few extra things you need to do for the quest 2 their manuals is really good about it if we want to go over this i do have a quest 2 and i could try get bone labs and give let it go please leave a comment if you want to see that so in this case you add whatever descriptions once you are done with this you're going to pack your nardo blue it will tell you to save your scenes save your scenes 
So now it should have exported and opened up your Windows Explorer. Now drop in your palette, which is inside the standalone Windows 64. You need to go to your local drive, users, the profile you're on right now, app data, local low, stress level zero, bone lab, and mods folder. Once you're there, you can come here, drag and drop, and once you start up bone labs, you'll see your avatar, as I will show you here shortly. Okay, so now we're here. We should be have it installed if you go to the body logger. You have all the all avatars and we look for Nardo Blue. Hey look, Nardo Blue. If we press confirm, we are now the shiny Nardo Blue. Uh, it doesn't really have a speech thing because it doesn't have a recognize in the speech thing, but we are now the shiny Nardo Blue and it works. And I can just pull out gun, pull out my pistol, rack it, and still shoot. On top of that, if you want to check, you can check in the main menu, which I'll show here, but you should be able to check also in the mods menu. This might just load all the mods. Nope, you can also check the installed mods here, and you should see your pack appear here. Nardo Blue. So that's about it. That's how you get it. <laughs> Although, this is really shiny, and you can adjust all the texture settings within Unity. That's about it. We have an avatar. If you like this video, please consider subscribing or giving a like or even commenting to see how well you got in it. If you have any questions, do join the Discord and DM me or just even leave a comment below with your questions and I will try to help you answer it and if not, then maybe I can find a video that will help suit you. With that, <laughs> happy modding. See ya. Well, this video may be for you. This video should hopefully be a step-by-step -step basics on how to set up avatars for Phone Lab. And if you, in the video... We have an avatar. I will see you folks <coughs> later.